Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Technically T, and we're finally getting into my iPhone 10 final review. Now, if you guys know, I've been running this device since the beginning, since it first came out, guys, as my main primary device. I've been using it every day, having switched from it, so this has been my main device since release day. So let's go ahead and get into what I don't like, what I like about it, because it's a little bit of both, and I wasn't on par with it in the beginning, but it's worked itself out to become a device that I really, really do like. So let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. Okay guys, once again, so let's go ahead and get into it. Full review of the iPhone 10. Now I don't want to make this video too long guys because I can, a lot of people say I waste time with my phone reviews. I don't have any script guys. I'm going straight off the head of what I feel. But let's see if we can bang these points out guys and try to keep this video below 10 minutes. So first things first guys, let's go ahead and start off with that build quality. Now you already know the iPhone 10 has a beautiful build quality with that black glass on the front and the back around with the stainless steel. Very nice design, guys. As you know, a very expensive phone and a very expensive phone if you were to drop it. Now, it is a huge fingerprint magnet. We all we already know that when it comes to dealing with glass back devices. Super fingerprint magnet. So if you're ain't knowing OCD about me, you need to keep a, a cloth, you know, just to keep it wiped off and keep it clean. But it is a beautiful device um, in your hand. It doesn't feel too bad at all. This is the black version and also the white version is very, is very nice too. Now, I was originally going to get the white version until I... The, the stainless steel size around it, guys, with the shiny stainless steel almost looking like chrome, that really bothered me. So I decided to opt out for the space gray version where it has sort of a black chrome effect and it will, you know, tend to hide scratches a little bit more. But build quality is A1, no issues whatsoever when it comes to the build quality. Next, let's get into that display, guys. Now, the display is right under 2K, so it's not too true, uh, you know, it's not too... A quad HD like say for example something like your Samsung Galaxy Note 8 but it is a very nice screen now comparison these with let's take this pull the weather app up and see if you can actually tell a difference in the colors now in the beginning when I started using the iPhone 10 I really couldn't tell a huge difference between the 1080p and the you know the almost 2k display of the iPhone 10 but what you have known to realize is guys is that the color temperatures are very different on these devices where the iPhone 10 is a little more warm display and where my iPhone 8 Plus is a very cool display. But where it also can tell is the iPhone 10 colors are a little bit more, um, you know, true tone. They're a little bit more realistic and saturated, more so when the iPhone 8 Plus are a little washed out, as you can tell. I don't know if you can tell over camera, guys, but the iPhone 8 Plus 1080 LCD screen, don't get me wrong, one of the best 1080 displays, panels out there do not get me wrong I'm not taking anything from it but compared to the iPhone 10 guys the iPhone 8 plus screen does seem a little washed out and that's just something I noticed over the time using the iPhone 10 and also using the iPhone 8 plus on the side but all that aside guys the screen is absolutely beautiful I have no issues with it one thing I was concerned about when they first had the keynote and they were talking about how many nits it was I was concerned that it wouldn't get bright enough guys but this phone gets plenty bright it's on full brightness and when it's actually on almost full brightness it's way too bright for my eyes guys so i almost keep it basically halfway full brightness you know i don't need full brightness but halfway is perfectly fine guys viewing angles are fine everybody talk about color shifts and it gives you a blue shift when you turn the screen look guys i'm using my phone face on i'm not looking at my phone at an angle i can care less what it looks like when it shifts the screen looks good it works for me the videos, the playback, everything is on point for me. I have no issues whatsoever. One thing I do have this issue about the screen, guys, is YouTube and actually how it plays YouTube videos. Now, if you look at a YouTube video, guys, you can see here that it is cropped. And you can zoom in. Now, my videos, you can never freaking zoom in. I don't know why. But let's open up another video here and see if we can zoom in. So you can... One thing about it, guys, when looking at it like this, this really bothers me when looking at a video like this, this weird aspect ratio. It feels like you're looking at it on a 6 or 7 or a smaller 4.7-inch phone screen, but you can blow it up and then you can take advantage of that full screen. And that, to me, is absolutely beautiful. I love how it literally goes edge to edge and it looks like it's all screen. But one thing I do not like is when a person is talking, some of their head is cut off. But that's due to that weird aspect ratio that Apple has their screen set at. It is not industry standard, so therefore, you will run into display issues when it comes down for things like that. But that is the only gripe that I have about the display is that weird aspect ratio that they have. Next, let's take a look at Face ID. Now, I, Face ID works fine. I'm not really going to get in too detail about Face ID because you guys heard it a thousand times for everybody else. Face ID for me works about 95% of the time. It is more convenient at times, and sometimes I feel like 
I miss Touch ID and Touch ID is more convenient at times. And sometimes Touch ID is a little quicker than Face ID. Um, I prefer to touch FaceTime, I mean, touch ID when you can be in a meeting or something and you can't pick up your phone or you're somewhere where you can't grab your phone, you can just pop your fingerprint on and open your, and open your device. Where this one, if you want to do anything, you know, on a sneak level, you got to put the PIN number in. That's fine, but, you know, PINs are old school. We're looking at Face ID. We're looking at fingerprints. Nobody wants to have to put in a PIN. But it works 95% of the time. Sometimes, you know, it works with my sunglasses on. It works in the complete darkness. Um, sometimes when I'm laying in the bed and half of my face is covered with the pillow, it tends to not read, but you know, that's what I have to deal with. Sometimes when I'm in the bed, I already consult to putting the pin code in because I know I'm going to have an issue with it reading. Sometimes if I have my hood on my head, it also may have a hard time reading me. So some situations, Touch ID, I like Touch ID better. It works better to me, but overall, Face ID works fine. It works fast. Sometimes when you're opening your phone with Face ID, you're not even realizing that you pause for that split second. But Apple, one thing I want you to do is when you come out with an update, have it to where we can look at our phone and it opens automatically without us having to swipe up after it unlocks. I do know and I understand that I get it what you're trying to do, but that's just a step that we can omit or at least give some users an option to open automatically as soon as it, you know, face ID detects your face. Give us an option. That's all I'm saying. Next, um, one thing, I, let's go back to face ID. One thing I do like is looking at your screen. Your notifications are hitting until you actually look at the screen, face ID, authenticate your face, and then it will show the content of your messages. I really, really love that feature. Just a little thing I do like that face ID does. Next, let's touch on Animojis. Now, Animojis were super big when they first came out, guys. Uh, let's see if I can open up some Animojis around here. Um, let's see if we can open it up. Animojis was super big, guys. I mean, you know, I'm behind camera. I don't know if it can actually detect my face, but Animojis were cool when they first came out. I can't, you know, I really can't get my face in it because I'm behind camera, but very cool feature. Me and a couple guys in our group chats, we'll use it and go from there. From time to time, we'll send the Animojis here and there. It's pretty fun to do, especially when you do a song with the Animoji. It's fun. It's cute, but I don't use it all the time. I barely use it. It's there if you were to use it, but like I said, I don't use it a bunch. Animojis there. If you use it, cool. If not, nah. It'll be cool once they start letting us record a little bit longer than 10 seconds. Then I can see maybe we'll use it a little bit more. But Animojis, cool feature. Does, is, it, is it needed? Not is it, is it necessary? Not at all. Next, let's talk about performance of the iPhone 10, guys. And this iPhone 10 has been blazing fast. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but the iPhone 10 runs smoother on iOS 11 than the iPhone 8 Plus does. The iPhone 8 Plus still gives me hiccups here and there, but this iPhone 10, guys, breezes. It does everything with the flash. You already know when, when iOS is optimized and everything is running good. It works flawlessly. iOS 11 is not the best. Let's say that right now. iOS 11 is not the best. But for right now, guys, the iPhone 10 runs great. Uh, battery life is absolutely extraordinary. I thought it wasn't going to give me the same battery life in the beginning. And on 11.1, I wasn't getting the best battery life, guys. But then the iPhone upgraded to 11.2, and I've been getting stellar battery life, if not a little bit better than my iPhone 8 Plus. I'm going to go ahead and put it out there. If not better, the same battery life as the iPhone 8 Plus. So if you guys are worried about the iPhone 10 not having enough battery, Trust me, you do not have to worry about that. The iPhone 10 gets me through the day with plenty of battery left, and I'm usually on it hardcore. Not super hardcore, but if I really, really go hard at it, it may be dead in about six, seven hours. But if I use it, just like you're casually using the phone, guys, it'll last you all day and more. Um, next, let's talk about the speakers. Speaker quality real quick. Speaker quality is A1. Not really worth giving you a test, guys, because you can't see the speaker or you can't hear the speaker through the Canon speaker that I have right here on my camera, but speaker is good, plenty loud when it comes to these speakers. Apple's been doing a really good job when it comes to their speakers, guys. It's getting very, very loud with the combination of stereo sound with the speaker up here and the bottom firing speaker there. Uh, let's see, what is next? Um, I don't know, guys. I mean, that might be it, the camera. Now, you guys already know the camera is A1 when it comes to the iPhone. Let's open the camera real quick right here. Let's go. You see I am behind the camera here. What up, guys? The portrait mode is pretty cool behind the camera. As you can see here, you see the portrait effect right here. And boom, taking a quick portrait behind the camera. Here you go, guys. I'm not sure if you can see the details in that, but it is pretty good detail. 
with the portrait front facing camera there. I look like a goober behind the camera, but it is good. But that is the front facing camera here. Front facing portrait mode is cool. I'm not a big selfies person, but if you take selfies, you can really take some dope selfies with that with that portrait mode. Now they do have where you have your portrait, uh, you know, your portrait lighting and all of that stuff, man. But that is all still in beta. It is not, uh, you know, it's not out working extremely good yet. It is still in beta, as you can see. Well, I know it's kind of hard with the camera there, but it is still in the beta. But maybe they'll come out with an update to get that working good because I, I can't wait to see that feature actually working pretty good. But the back facing camera, as you guys know, sometimes the iPhone can tend to overexpose some edges when looking at certain pictures. But for the most 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 point, you already know what to expect when you're dealing with an iPhone camera. It's a nice point and shoot camera. What you see is what you get, a very consistent camera. And that's what you get with the iPhone 10, guys. Very nice camera. Um, recording in 4K 60 frames per second is absolutely insane. I haven't done it too many times on the X. I haven't done it plenty of times on my iPhone 8 Plus when I had it. But it is absolutely beautiful. It is absolutely stunning, guys. The 4K 60 frame per second mode is crazy. Um, even though, you know, I can't really take full advantage of it because I don't have a 4K TV or anything like that. But looking at it back on your phone is absolutely beautiful, guys. No issues whatsoever there. Now, that may be it, guys, for my iPhone 10 review. I feel like I'm missing a bunch because I feel like I was running through it very quickly, guys. Um, I think I may make a separate video of which one should you choose, but I don't think there's need to. Let's go ahead and jump into it right now. People ask me what should I choose between the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, in the very beginning, guys, I was very skeptical. Step, skept, blah, blah, blah. Skeptical about the iPhone 10 and the uh, no fingerprint scanner, uh, that notch up there. I was real iffy about it, and I, it was just hard to let go of the iPhone's design. This is a classic design. This is what we're used to. This is what we're comfortable with. And Apple really got it right and got it really polished with the 8 Plus. Now, should you choose the 10 or the 8 Plus? They're both great devices. It's whether do you want the latest and greatest? Do you want to jump on Apple's bandwagon and not deal with Touch ID? You want all facial ID? You want a front portrait mode? You want an emojis? You want all those cool things? The iPhone 10 is the way to go. This is the future. Sadly, with the notch and the face ID, this is the future of Apple. You know what I mean? This is what we have to deal with going forward. But if you're not ready to jump on the iPhone 10's bandwagon, guys, which there's a lot of people out there, and I was one. And it's still hard for me to get rid of this 8 Plus. I was supposed to sell this two months. As soon as the 10 came out, I was supposed to sell this phone. I still have it. And it's something, it's just something I can't get rid of it. Because it's like, I, I love the 10, but I can't get rid of the iPhone 8 Plus. I really, really love the iPhone 8 Plus. Um, if someone asked me what the phone of the year was and rank them, I would rank the iPhone 8 Plus above the iPhone 10. That's just because this device is polished. This Apple finally got it right with the 8 Plus. This is a more complete device with the iPhone 10. I was calling it a prototype device, but it's not a prototype device. It's a very solid device, a very overall great device, but I feel like this is a better device with the correct aspect ratio. Um, all the apps are optimized for it. You open an app that's not optimized for uh, the iPhone 10, guys, and you know it right away. You know what I mean? So I can't really bring an app. I'm trying to find something that's not optimized for it. Uh, Hotels.com. Here it is. When you find the app that's not optimized for it, guys, it really is, it really bothers you. But everything is optimized. Everything works well on the A plus. Solid. Same back camera, basically at the end of the day, except the other one, the other lens here has OIS. But same great cameras, guys. Don't let anyone tell you one phone is better than the other. They're both very great phones. They both do both things very well. But I have chose to use the iPhone 10 as my daily driver and for a minute I was going to return to 10 but I decided to hang on to it guys and I'm going to actually be selling my 8 plus uh very soon and it's basically a brand new device but overall I've grown to really like the iPhone 10 I I do know this is just the beginning stages of things like face ID um things where we can use these sensors a little better this is just the beginning I remember when the, when touch ID wasn't all that when it first came out but over time guys it got very solid it became a very nice feature, and this is probably one of the best fingerprint scanners out there on the device. So, guys, this is my full review of the iPhone 10. Excellent device. It has a few things that can get worked out. Apps still need to be updated. Um, that weird aspect ratio, I'm not a huge fan of. 
the cost to fix these things if you, if you break it, guys. Get you a case. You know what I mean? You know I do case reviews, guys. Get you a case. Don't even run. If you want to run this phone naked, you're running a bit risk or get Apple Care. I know a lot of you guys out there don't want to run a case. That's cool with me, but get Apple Care, guys. This case, this phone is indeed expensive to fix if you were to break it. So, guys, iPhone 10, final review. A lot of my friends was looking, you know, waiting for this to be me to put it out. I like the phone. Should you get it over the 8 Plus? That's up to you. You have to decide if you want to go with the latest or greatest or you're not ready yet. And you can stick with the 8 Plus, guys, which is an excellent device. But, guys, as always, give this video a huge thumbs up. If you like it, comment, subscribe. If there was something I missed about the iPhone 10, if you want to ask me any question, guys, you already know I'm in the comment section 100% of the time. I try to get back to everybody's comments. So if you do have a question, please drop it down below, guys, and I'll be sure to get back with you. But until next time, guys, later.